What's up everyone and welcome back to Movie Race. Netflix's controversial 365 Days trilogy gave us, um, how should I say this? A controversial ending. Who did Laura choose, Massimo or Nacho? Well, that's the big question. Fans were left on what seemed to be a cliffhanger at the end of 365 Days 3. And now, they are asking for a continuation that will, hopefully, give a proper ending to their favorite Netflix story. So, can Nacho, Laura, and Massimo return in 365 Days 4? Let's find out! We'll start off with a potential release date. Before we discuss the potential release date of 365 Days 4, we need to see if a continuation seems likely. So, is Netflix interested in 365 Days 4? Well, Netflix is still deciding whether to continue the franchise, but considering the success of the third film, we might stumble upon an official statement soon. In other words, it's just a matter of time until the streaming giant gives us a green light to the fourth, much-needed installment. The 365 Days movies did well box office-wise, but the franchise faced a lot of issues with critics. Most of them, um, hated the trilogy, mostly because of the toxic relationship that was featured in the films. But then again, this is not real life, it's just a movie, so why can't we all enjoy it? Just like hero Fianna's Tiffin once said about the franchise he stars in, after, this is not a book with rules that someone should follow. Anyway, 365 Days began with Massimo, a mafia boss, kidnapping Laura and giving her a year to fall in love with him. She needed a few days to completely fall for him, so that mission was successful. To be honest, I find the storyline a bit problematic as well, at the very least. The second installment was packed with wild plot twists, including the introduction of Massimo's evil twin brother, a rival mafia boss. But none of these twists were as shocking as the trilogy introducing Nacho, Laura's other love interest, who was disguised as a gardener when he first appeared on the screen. Both the first and second films ended on a cliffhanger, with the third making Laura choose between Nacho and Massimo. If you can't decide between two guys, maybe you should leave them both, and maybe, just maybe, you should try to find another guy whom you love. Don't you guys agree? In the end, Laura appears to choose Massimo, but this is not confirmed in any way because fans are still divided. Look at you. Look at me. There's no us. Some claim Laura chose Massimo, while others are confidently claiming she chose Nacho. Because of this, 365 Days 4 seems like a necessity now. Luckily, there's a big chance such a project could happen because everyone from the already familiar cast ensemble is interested in returning and reprising their roles. But the question is when? When could 365 Days 4 be on Netflix? Sadly, we have no idea because Netflix hasn't even decided whether they want to continue the franchise yet. Maybe if fans are more consistent, maybe if we beg Netflix. Okay, seriously, the second and third movies were filmed back to back, which is why they were released relatively close to each other, April 2022 and August 2022. The creators kept the third film a secret for a long time. My theory is the following, they are actually filming a fourth installment secretly and they'll come out with an announcement soon. There were two years between 365 Days and its sequel, 365 Days, this day. So if 365 Days 4 gets green-lighted this year, we'll see it sometime in 2024. Maybe by the end of 2024? If my theory of filming a secret continuation comes true, we might see it by the end of this year. Who knows? Oh, we do know that you need to smash that like button if you haven't done it already. So, if such a project happens, what could its story be? For those who haven't read the books, you should know that the next 365 days screen adaptation was quite different from the book. No, we're not talking about small alterations. The creators decided to put a huge shift in the story, and they didn't stay loyal to the source material. This means that there is unused source material that could be easily turned into a movie. In other words, Netflix is now able to use the third book in the book series for yet another screen adaptation. The only problem is that the source material that was left out is a bit problematic, which is actually the reason why it was not used in the first place. The third installment opens up with Laura having survived being shot. However, this storyline plays out differently in the book. In the book series, Laura was pregnant when she was shot, which happens by the end of the book. In the Netflix adaptation, she was pregnant when she was involved in the crash at the end of the first movie. The outcome of these situations is the same. Laura ends up losing her baby and is heartbroken. Here's what Netflix decided not to use in the adaptations. You see, when Laura loses her baby, she becomes an alcoholic. Massimo, on the other side, becomes addicted to drugs and sex. In the films, 
Their relationship was not rainbows and butterflies, but it was definitely better than it was in the books. The story in the books is a bit darker and quite disturbing. Laura survives her injuries in the book thanks to Nacho. He procures her a heart for a transplant. No, no, he doesn't give her his own heart. Anyway, in the books, Laura is constantly dragged between Nacho and Massimo. At one point, she decided to move in with Nacho, and while there, she receives a package with her dead dog, a dog that Massimo bought for her. She assumes the package is from Massimo, and she's absolutely right. You see what they did there? They turned Massimo into a monster. Olga and Dominico's wedding happens in the third book. There, Laura sees Massimo with another woman. She gets jealous, goes to him, and starts a conversation, only for him to tell her that Nacho killed her dog. Shocked after hearing this, Laura goes back to Massimo. When she gets into his mansion, he tells her that he was the one who killed her dog, and she ends up being the prisoner once again. Massimo then gives drugs to Laura and tries to get her pregnant. She tells him that she will kill herself, and after some really disturbing storylines, she escapes, and believe it or not, goes back to Nacho. By the end of the book, we discover that Nacho and Laura welcomed a baby girl. So yeah, Laura chose Nacho in the end, but this is how her story wraps up in the novels. In the Netflix adaptation, it looks like she chooses Massimo, although this is not confirmed. This is a really problematic plot, simply because a lot of fans love Massimo and his personality in the films. He is the bad guy, yes, but he also loves and keeps Laura safe. And if he turns into this monster, well, a lot of viewers would hate the franchise. I don't think Netflix will use this source material for the next 365 days film. Maybe the author of the novels is currently writing another book that will continue the saga of Laura, Massimo, and Nacho. That would be a better option than making a film based on the third novel, don't you guys agree? Given the changes in the third movie, it feels like the creators are yet to give us a conclusion. So, who would come back for 365 Days 4? Anna Maria Sheklutska and Michelle Marone would certainly return as Laura and Massimo, respectively. I mean, 365 Days wouldn't have been so popular and successful without them. Simone Susina's Nacho has become an essential part of the series, so he'd be back too. Maybe Laura will choose him in the potential continuation? Who knows? We'll be happy to see Magdalena Limparska as Laura's BFF, Olga, alongside Otar Sarlitze as Olga's fiancé and Massimo's right-hand man, Dominico. Per a report by Netflix, you need to smash that subscribe button and notification bell so you'll never miss any of our videos in the future. Either way, we feel like the third installment is not the end of the franchise, and it's just a matter of time until Netflix comes up with an official announcement that confirms 365 Days 4 is happening. See you in the next video!